most of the ideas from my videos, I'm getting straight from the lessons that I'm teaching. And it just so happened this last weekend, I ran into three of the most common issues that people face when they have a two-handed backhand. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what they are, and then of course, how to fix them. The first issue that I'm seeing is not necessarily so much a mistake, but it's to my mind a missed opportunity to gain more rhythm and also more power and control. And that is when players are taking the racket just down and back. So of course in the beginning when you are a newer player, it is so much easier to just take the racket down and back and come from down and back here to up high over your right shoulder. And there is a video actually of Serena Williams showing her daughter how her dad taught her, Serena, the backhand, and she keeps repeating down and back. However, when you do watch Serena's matches, you do see that she has a loop. So having a loop will help you to get a smoother, rounder motion and more control over your backhand. However, when you're returning, the just down and back and then basically just blocking the ball is a great option because you just simply don't have the time for a big take back. And here's an example of Ash Barty's, how she's returning. So Ash Barty here on the return, a very, very compact take back, a little bit of a loop, but she's not even following through because she just doesn't have time. So the way that you're describing a loop or a C shape is that on the take back, you want to work on having the racket face above your hands and your hands should stay between your shoulder and your hip. This can be individual. Some players do have it here, some players have it a little lower, but you definitely want to get into racket head above your hand and then letting the racket head drop. And now you see the racket head is below the hand and below the incoming ball. So you're letting the racket head drop, and really ideal would be if your racket face points slightly down. And from this point on here, you're pulling up and forward to contact point. And the contact point wants to be in front of you. Two-handers generally don't have their contact points out as far in front as a one-hander, but you definitely do want to have it out in front. And at contact point, you want your racket either neutral or ever so slightly closed because that helps you to give the ball topspin which gives you net clearance and which gives you depth and here's a great little drill that we just saw carlos alcaraz do to get the feel of what your racket head needs to be doing when you want more of a loop so let's check it out The next issue that I'm seeing a lot is that two-handed backhand players don't extend long enough. They're pulling across their bodies a whole lot and therefore depriving themselves of control and also of power. So what you want to do instead is really paying attention to your off hand, your off arm. So your non-dominant hand becomes more active on the forward swing. So when you're turning on your unit turn, it's your more dominant arm, your bottom hand that facilitates that turn a little bit more. However, on the forward swing, your left, for me, my left arm, if you're a right-hander, is the one that should dictate the extension a little bit more. So one good way to work on the extension is to not start the breaking of the elbows before your left arm is fairly straightened out. You don't want to hyperextend it, but you will see in the examples that I'm going to show you that the left arm extends long, 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 and then comes over. The extension then, of course, also helps you to finish correctly. You don't want to finish here. You don't want to pull it across your hips. You want to finish high over your right shoulder, almost that your racket touches your back. I can't really show you that because I don't have enough mobility in my upper body anymore. I'm actually, when I'm hitting a two-hander, I'm finishing here. Better would be all the way so that your elbow points forward to your opponent and your butt cap does as well. Last issue that I see quite a bit is that players think because they have two hands on the racket, they should hit a harder ball. 
and that sinking leads to uh, uh, literally just using the arms. So on your two-hander, you've got to work on a low base and the loading of your back leg. So this here, you can't generate as much power. If I'm coming from my back foot here and I have a long stride, I can now really use all the energy that I'm creating by pushing back into the ground that flows up through my body and forward. So that is how I get pop on the ball. And here's a good little drill on how to feel that a little better. Go ahead and fix a pull rope slightly lower than your hips on a fence or wherever you want to fix it and engage your entire body here. Here I feel like I can really accelerate and you see how I'm engaging my entire left side. If I'm just using my arms, at some point I'm gonna get tired if I do that over the duration of a match and it feels completely jerky, it doesn't feel round. It doesn't feel like I can control the ball. So again, use your entire body from the ground up. If you like this video and the information in it, go ahead and check out my Patreon membership site because there I'm publishing way more videos, exclusive videos. There's also other perks that you can get for as little as $5 a month. And if you get into the Grand Slam level, you're also joining our monthly live coaching call. So check out my Patreon membership.